Hi everyone, I am Alberto Alvarez Martin and I'll be giving you a brief overview of our paper titled Intermittent Control as a Model of Mouse Movements. Let me start by introducing the general context and the purpose of our work. The main idea behind our paper is to introduce intermittent control as a biologically inspired framework to better understand our interaction with computers. The overall context for this was a point in task, which allowed us to examine the ability of intermittent control to explain the variability and dynamics of the human response. Building on the work of Mula and colleagues, which explores the use of control models in pointing, we identified the parameters of intermittent control based on their experimental mouse movement data. Now let's start with a brief overview of feedback in the context of human movement. We know that movement is fundamental in most human-computer interaction frameworks, and that voluntary movement has a strong feedback component. Feedback is needed to, get, to generate appropriate actions to get to the target or to achieve our goal. It is natural to think that humans can react to feedback continuously, with their actions being affected by sensory information at all times. However, there are experimental results in motor control of voluntary movements showing that humans can react continuously to feedback and that the responses are pre-planned and executed ballistically mainly due to physiological constraints such as the refractory period. This means that even when a control action might appear continuous in nature, its behavior is determined by individual feedback instances. These ideas led to the development of what we now call the intermittent control paradigm. Now let's have a look at the continuous control model in the context of pointing with a little bit more detail. Let's start with a general pointing task where there is a target on a screen and the goal is to bring the pointer to the target as fast as possible using a computer mouse. First we would have to process our sensory information to form a representation of the system state. Then future states are predicted to anticipate and overcome possible delays in the loop to then build a control action that drives the dynamics of the human computer interface and eventually moving the pointer on the screen. In this model, sensor information is continuously being used to generate a control action. Now, how is intermittent control different from this continuous interpretation? Well, it is based on the two main concepts, which are the internal model of the system and the trigger to decide when to use feedback. The internal model produces an ideal version of our system state that is compared against the current state, and the trigger decides when to open or close the feedback loop based on this difference, bringing intermittent behavior into the model. In this case, the prediction and the internal model are updated with feedback information only when the trigger closes the loop. This model has important parameters that define its behavior. For instance, we use a constant to define the minimum amount of time the system evolves in open loop. We also use a threshold value to decide if the difference between the current and ideal states is large enough to trigger the use of feedback. There is an observation gain that affects how fast we can obtain a representation of our system state and individual control design parameters that are used to build a control action. Also, a mismatch gain is used to account for differences between the internal model and the real system dynamics. These parameters were optimized to match the human responses from an experimental pointing task that looked more or less like this. The participants were asked to start a trial by moving a computer mouse in order to click on a target at the edge of the screen. Once a click was made on the target, a new trial was started in the opposite direction. The participants were tested on blocks of 80 consecutive trials. The experiment had two main variations. The width of the target regions was varied, as well as the distance between the targets. These combinations gave eight different conditions that were categorized based on their index of difficulty. Now let's look at a few trials of the recorded data, which corresponds to the horizontal movement of the pointer on the screen. Here we see a few trials of the recorded data as an example. On the left, we see the pointer position against time, and on the right, the position is compared to the pointer velocity as a phase plane. Our methodology started by looking at the recorded data and the target signal to create data slices, which were formed by two consecutive trials each. 
Individual intermittent controllers were obtained for each slice by optimizing the model parameters that were described earlier. This allowed the creation of banks of controllers for all participants and conditions. A simulation can be created by randomly selecting a controller from the bank and applying the identified parameters for two consecutive trials, before switching to another controller from the bank. The resulting set of controllers were analyzed to understand the relationship between the parameters and the behavior of the response. This was done by looking at the parameter distributions for each condition, as well as the low dimensional projections obtained through machine learning techniques. Now let's have a brief look at the responses obtained when a continuous control model is used in simulation. Face planes from the experimental data of three participants are shown in blue for both easy and difficult conditions. Variability can be observed clearly and the characteristic submovements of pointing can also be seen for the difficult condition at the bottom of the figure. The continuous control response is now overlapped and shown in red. We can see that the simulated trajectories do not capture the experimental variability of the difficult condition nor the submovements as the pointer approaches the target. Now, Here's a similar comparison, but for a single participant in all the conditions of the experiment. As before, the experimental result is shown in blue. In this case, the, difficult of the, task, the difficulty of the task increases from left to right as the target regions get narrower and narrower, displayed as green vertical lines. If we overlap the simulated intermittent control responses for each condition, shown in red, we see that the overall variability is better captured when intermittent control is used, getting a wider range of responses, even for the most difficult conditions. Our full paper contains a deeper look at our analysis and results, as well as a more detailed explanation on the theory of intermittent control. Now to bring things to a close, I want to mention a few conclusions based on our work. First. This work allowed us to show that intermittent control is able to better explain the variability and dynamic features of pointing movements in comparison to continuous control alternatives. In terms of the correctives of movements seen in pointing tasks, intermittent control provides a physiologically inspired interpretation and is able to replicate them. Finally, the framework has a predictive nature and relies on an internal model of the interface dynamics. This gives intermittent control the potential to help in the design of feedback for computer interfaces. Thank you all for your attention. If you want to see more of our analysis and results, please visit our online code repository using the following URL.